Hey, it's Blake. We're at a thrift store and this video is finding resale items you can sell for over $50 profit. The first item is a Tivoli audio CD player. This is a cherry wood finish with no uh, power cord or AV components, but it's an expensive item retail and usually expensive retail items sell for a lot on the secondary market. That's how it works usually. It's $10 at the thrift store. Uh, this is gonna sell for like between 75 and probably 90 bucks. Um, it's a bit dinged up. If it was in better condition, it'd go for a lot more. But as you can see here, uh, that same model with the remote, over 100 bucks, uh, and then new, the newest generation of these is almost $800 uh, brand new. So just a, a brand to look out for. Again, it's Tivoli, T-I-V-O-L-I. -I. Um, lots of home audio stuff that you can find and resell for big profits. This item is a Cuisinart or Cuisinart, however you say it, uh, toaster oven with a digital screen on the bottom, a bit dirty on the inside. When you resell these, they have to be very clean. Buyers are very picky. If they're buying a used kitchen item, you'd think that they would expect it to be a bit dirty. But uh, I've had returns because there were too many crumbs, for example. And to me, on like a toaster, that seems crazy. Uh, that being said, these are still big profit items. This is kind of a lower end model. There are some Cuisinart uh, or just toaster ovens in general that sell for hundreds of dollars. You can see here, probably uh, that one would have sold for about 80 to 100 bucks. Uh, sometimes they go for more and brand new, we're looking at like 200 to 350 on the higher end model. So again, not just this brand, but any, you know, if it's got a lot of a big heavy metal body or a big digital screen, it's worth looking up. And a lot of these items are not picked over because they're harder to ship uh, and so the more you know, novice resellers might pass them up. I think this item is the biggest risk, biggest reward purchase I had on this thrift trip I made. It's a Fisher Price Kid Tough DVD player. I couldn't test it in the store, so I don't know if it actually works, but if it does work, uh, there's two options for me to sell it. On eBay, I can probably get between 40 and maybe $85, uh, assuming it works, and I'll probably have to add a power cord to that too. Um, it's just a typical 9 volt cord, I think, so that's going to be easy to find. But if I sell it on Amazon, which I can do because I'm ungated, I'd sell it as used, obviously. Uh, it's currently unavailable, meaning there are no offers. So I could set it at $110. bucks. i am going to be able to dictate the price on Amazon more than eBay. So what I think I'll do, even though it's more likely to sell in a month on eBay, I think because of my business setup where I can wait longer to sell things, I'm going to put it on Amazon at like maybe $150. Uh, and gradually lower the price over the next few weeks to see if I can get someone to buy it. Because just look, compare those two pictures. Which looks more uh, inviting to you as a buyer? That one on the right or that one in the top left? I would say top left. Um, and maybe I'm wrong, you know, who knows? But I have a good feeling that I can get easily 50 bucks profit on this on Amazon. And if I held out for the right buyer on eBay, it wouldn't be that bad either. Following the same trend as the toaster oven, this is another home appliance, a kitchen appliance that oftentimes you see newer resellers passing because they're kind of hard to ship. Uh, I didn't say this earlier, but I would have sold that earlier toaster oven uh, as a Facebook you know, local pickup. I wouldn't want to ship it. Doesn't mean you can't ship it, but I wouldn't want to, and I think that in my area it would sell. Same with this. I would probably sell this locally. Um, it's a decent enough brand. It's KitchenAid. It looks nice. Probably on eBay, I could get maybe 40 to 60 bucks for this, but I think locally it'd be easy to get 60 bucks. Uh, and then there's no shipping, and if it's a cash transaction, there's no fees. And so that's why I'm putting this one in, in the, uh, the $50 profit range. Kind of low, um, but just I wanted to bring up KitchenAid blenders and blenders in general. Those are kind of passed a, a lot on. Um, brands to look out for, like obviously, like Vitamix is a, it's a huge one, but there's also other, uh, just in general, kitchen brands like Viking. Uh, that really are going to sell for a lot more. Or Wolf is one too. They're going to sell for a lot more than like Oyster or like Hamilton Beach products you're going to see. Um, and they're going to look to the untrained eye, I'd say relatively similar. By no means am I a jeans aficionado. I know a little bit about what sells. Uh, I've bought enough clothing and thrown away or donated enough clothing that didn't sell to learn some of the basics. And one of those things is that not all Levi's sell the same. There's that number on the tag, 569, 505, 501. In this case, 560. Levi's 560 jeans. These are made in USA, so they're vintage. They're probably 25, 30 years old. 
Uh, 560 is like a tapered cut that's kind of loose. That's coming back in style, or <laughs> so I've heard. I don't really know, you know, firsthand. But just keeping my ears open uh, and watching what model numbers of jeans, if you want to call them that, just the cut number, the style number, I don't know what you want to say, uh, watching those fluctuate, this 560 brand, especially made in USA, or like Orange Tab or even more valuable jeans, are going gradually up in value. Uh, we're going to see on eBay like 35 to 75 range, and on like Poshmark, uh, they're going to be like probably 40 to $100 range. Um, obviously, like the orange tab sell for more than the, the red tab, and made in USA sell for more than like made in Colombia or made in Mexico, wherever the newer ones are. So keep an eye out for that. Check the tag. Uh, with these jeans, make sure there's no like giant holes in the crotch, but holes in like the knees or the butt area. Those seem to be okay. You can call them distressed or destroyed. And in some cases, if you have the right buyer, a destroyed pair of jeans might sell for twice that a, a, a you know, in this condition pair would sell for. Okay, don't get mad at me, but this is not actually, in its current condition in the current market, a $50 flip. Uh, they're cool. They're vintage 1986 garbage pail po packet, pocket, pocket folders, not packet folders. Uh, they have the little flap in the inside you can put your school papers in. And there's only four of them, and they wanted seven bucks for it. And if you check, like, the sold listings, um, they're all over the place. This is kind of an emerging market, I guess, to like the consumer collector, garbage pail kid stuff. There are 2020 and 2021 reissues of a lot of the stuff. So you want to make sure that the 1986 or like early 80s uh, variations. This uh, on the bottom of the folder says Tops 1986. And I believe that's like the first large collectible run. If you don't know what this is, they're just kind of like gross Cabbage Patch Kids. That's like the general idea. Um, and they're going up in value as like companies like Tops put more money into making these collectibles mainstream. The older stuff from the 80s is going to go up more and more and more. Uh, so what I'm going to do is price these at like 60 bucks. So I want to get 15 bucks per. And that's kind of high. But I do think that maybe not in a month. So again, kind of shouldn't be on the list but in like six months i do think they'll sell uh, and they're so light i'm gonna get first class shipping and they're in great condition which only makes me want to raise the price more they're collectibles there is a finite number and in cases like that the seller has way more power than the buyer does back to a good old reliable item this is a vcr panasonic pv v 4800 i think uh, when you're buying VCRs, specifically Panasonic VCRs, the prefix you want to look for is PV and the model number, uh, forehead Omnivision. That's going to make sure that it's like a relatively late model VCR. Kind of like with Sony, make sure it's a SLV model. Uh, and this is just like general rules of thumb. As we're going to see in a few seconds, there are some way more valuable VCRs than the PV series, uh, but that's what you're going to most commonly see. So besides like the PV dash whatever VCRs, there's also the AG dash whatever VCRs. And those are S VHS VCRs, which is like a higher quality VHS tape. I'm not 100% sure on the details of that, uh, but those are going to sell for like over 250. And the, the regular, you know, forehead Omnivision VHS recorder v VCRs, um, which is the just, you know, VCRs, what I call them, you're going to see going for like 40 on places like Facebook Marketplace, upwards of like 150 on Amazon. Uh, but if you're on eBay, which that's how I'm trying to format this video, you should be fine buying it for like 10, 15 bucks, selling it for like 100 and making easily $50 profit on that. I wanted to include this because a lot of people complain about thrift store pricing. And here's an example of some crazy thrift store pricing. $8 for a Disney VHS tape. That's insane. I don't care what you read on BuzzFeed. Black diamonds are not rare. Black diamond Disney tapes are not going to bring you in $5,000 or $20 even. Uh, they price them at 8 bucks here because they don't really know what they're doing. But they also price this Blu-ray player with apps and Wi-Fi at $8 too because, again, they don't know what they're doing. Uh, and that allows us to make some money. So with Blu-ray players, we're thinking about any major brand when we're sourcing. Uh, you know, Sony, Samsung, um, Panasonic. Oppo is a higher-end brand we see over here on the right that sells for over $300. And you want to make sure that you're buying the ones with Wi-Fi and apps installed, not the older, just like brick models that are... They don't have any apps, they're just Blu-ray players. Those sell for like $25 to $45, and they sell a lot less frequently than these 
you know, dating back to like 2013 generation Blu-ray players that have apps installed uh, and are relatively small and can fit in a lot of small spaces. So check those out. You can sell them pretty easily. So there you go. Eight easy $50 profit flips you can sell on eBay. You can sell on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, some of these brands are going to be gated on Amazon. And that's why I chose only eBay flips because I don't want to make this unusable for the average new reseller. My hope is you can watch this and listen to what I said, you know, kind of get the general idea of the nuances I look for when I'm outsourcing and either just buy these items or use like, oh, he said that toaster ovens are good. This isn't a Cuisinart toaster oven, but it's another fancy Chrome brand. So I'm gonna look that up. Uh, just using that kind of like lateral thinking, I think is what makes a lot of resellers successful. Uh, and in this video, like you saw, I'd say I'm gonna spend six hours total between sourcing and listing and shipping. And it should make me about 400 bucks profit. Uh, you know, maybe those garbage pill kids might take a little bit longer to sell, but everything else should sell in like a month, if not less. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I appreciate you guys watching it. Please subscribe, watch some more of my videos for content like this, and I'll see you guys soon with more videos that make your life better.